Hallelujah. Thank Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your mighty We're so grateful to be coming to you this morning. There's only a few of us here, our praise team and our musicians. But we are so thankful for the presence of God. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. We we are living in, in times that we've never lived in before. And some people, their hearts are troubled. And, and fear sometimes kind of seems to take over. Yeah. But God hasn't given us the spirit of fear. We've heard that so many times. Yes. If you pay attention to any live daily devotional or church service or man of God or woman of God, you've heard that scripture over and over again in the last month, month and a half. He hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but we are human. Yes. We are human. And being human, sometimes we get in the flesh. And sometimes that fear seems to creep in. And we had a sister in our church that Every time it seemed like I spoke with her or we zoomed and, and saw her, I would see some type of fear upon her. And it concerned me. And, and I began to pray just a little extra for her, just a little harder each day. Yes. God, you did not give her that spirit. Yes. And I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. Yes. And God, I lose your spirit, your spirit of love and joy, your spirit of peace in her life and I spoke with her yesterday and I as she was speaking to me and and she had come by the church by herself or with one other lady and and they were doing something and she said when she walked in this place Mm -hmm. now this is just a building you know we 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 are the church right he lives inside of us and so what we put out there for all the world to see on Facebook you're the church, That's right. so you remember that. But she said as she walked in this building, she felt his presence. Not that she didn't feel his presence at home or in her car, but she was kind of overwhelmed because she's missed this place that we gather to worship. Yes. And she said she began to pray, and she began to feel that loosening. God is so good. Hallelujah. So good. Don't ever give up hope. Don't ever give up hope. We're going to see a great, mighty revival, but we want those people to come to God because out of love, not out of fear. Because God did not give us that spirit. And I am a firm believer that if you come to God out of fear, chances are when the scare is gone, so will you. But if you come to God because you realize that there is no other way. He is your hope. He is your everything. And that you need him. And without him, you are nothing. Yes. Then when you come to him and surrender your all to him, yes. you'll stay. You'll be like a tree planted by the waters. Yes. You won't be able to be moved. Sure, the wind will blow. The storm will rage. Nowhere do I find in the word of God does it say that once I come to God, I am protected from all things, that I will never have a trial or a crisis in my life. But what it does say is that he'd be my friend and he'd stick closer to me than any brother and that he would never leave me nor forsake me and that he would not change every time the wind blew wrong that he would be the same yesterday today and forever he is my savior he is our coming king worship with us as we lead you into worship hallelujah thank you Jesus
Praise your mighty name. Praise your mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a beautiful presence of the Lord in the house this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I want to see Hallelujah. Oh, what a day that's going to be. Amen. Hallelujah. All our troubles will be over. All our worries will be over. Everything that brings us down will no longer bother us anymore. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So thankful to be in his presence. So thankful to be, as Sister Jennifer said, to be here in this building. Amen. And, uh, to be able to worship the Lord. And like her and like many others, can't wait for the time to, to be able to gather all together again. Amen. Under the, the roof here, inside these four walls, to hear all our brothers and sisters worshiping the Lord, praying together. Amen. Um, we have our Zoom video prayer and devotion and we have conference call and it's great to hear their voices yes, amen. but oh it's going to be a different thing when we can gather again gather yes. together again amen. Yes. Amen. to be able to lift up the name of Jesus yes. if you have your Bibles this morning turn with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 6 and we're going to begin reading with verse number 1 Isaiah chapter 6, and verse number 1. The Bible says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I also, or I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Isaiah, then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth, and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine, iniqu thine, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and whom will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Here am I, send me. I want to speak this morning for just a few minutes on this thought, Isaiah's change of heart. Isaiah's change of heart. Verse 1 mentions the death of King Uzziah. And unlike many of the other kings, he never uh, totally departed from the worship of the true God. And we find that that Isaiah is disturbed by the death of this great king. His death signaled the end of a time of great uh, prosperity. And for Isaiah and the entire nation, it ushered in a time of uncertainty, a time of change, and a time of doubt. Yes. And certainly, in this day and time we live in now, that certainly sounds very familiar. Amen. We're in a time of uncertainty. Yes. We're in a time of change. And unfortunately, there is some doubt. Yes. But yet for Isaiah, this became or this 
is to become a time of rediscovery, a time of change of heart. And apparently, we find that Isaiah had his attention focused on Uzziah. But now Uzziah is dead and his attention is, is redirected or it's refocused back to the Lord. And what must have been a very down time in Isaiah's life, uh, Isaiah is now discovering a fresh encounter with God. And what, and what happened to Isaiah here gives us an idea of what we need to be doing during the, the struggling times and during the down times in our lives. And look, we, we all have struggling times. We all have times that are down. We all have down times in our life. Yes. And, and, and those down times, they can do one of two things. Those down times, those struggling times, they can grow us or they can ruin us. Yes. And it really depends on what has our attention. And I want to look at these eight verses and, and think for a while on the thought what we need to do during our struggling times and during the down times of our life. And, and in this process, we need to learn that when life brings us down, that when life turns us down, that we, we, we can have help to, to bring, it to, uh, bring it to an end quicker than it normally does or bring it... Uh, back up in a very short period of time. And there's a few things that Isaiah did and I want to point out this morning. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to see what Isaiah saw. In verse number 1 through 4 we find that the first thing that Isaiah saw is he saw God's position. Yeah. Isaiah saw God in his complete sovereignty. An earthly king may have died, but the Lord still reigned. And he saw the Lord in all of his glory. And this seeing the Lord in all of his glory had a very profound impact on the life of Isaiah. And look, when life seems to, to fall apart at the seams, we need to remember that God is in complete control of every yes, single thing. What appears to be a tragedy to most of us can actually be the greatest thing that can ever happen in our lives. So we need to remember who Jesus is and remember that he is in control. Yes, he is. And the second thing Isaiah saw is he, thought, he saw God's personality. The angels there, the angelic beings in the temple proclaimed three different times the nature of God in heaven. When they cried, holy, holy, holy. Even these angels, even these uh, sinless creatures were careful to honor the holiness and the purity of the Lord. And, and, and notice that they covered their face with their wings. They also promised the glory of the Lord. And Isaiah finally understood that Uzziah might have been a good king, but the Lord was a holy God. And he alone deserved all the glory and honor for all of life. Amen. And we need to remember today that God's primary characteristic is his holiness. And our duty before the Lord is to honor his holy nature by living holy lives before him. We should or we are to recognize his right to, uh, his right to, to glory by giving him all the glory for everything in our lives. All the glory for everything in our lives. Isaiah learned that this thing was not about Uzziah. That this thing was not about uh, Isaiah, but it's all about God. He and he alone deserves to be in the place of glory and honor. Yeah. And we need to be careful that we don't assume that place that really belongs to him. But during the down times of our life, during the struggles of our life, we need to remember who is working all things out of his holiness and for the glory of his name. 
Third thing that Isaiah saw is he saw God's presence. We are told that the house was filled with smoke. And this was a symbol of the presence of God. And you will notice that the scriptures all also tell us that God's train filled the temple. And that, that speaks of his robe. So what it's saying is that God was the central figure in the temple. Isaiah was reminded that Uzziah, Uzziah might be gone, but the Lord was still there. That he had not forsaken even during this struggling time in his life, even during the downtime of his life, but the Lord was still with him in great glory. Yes. And we need to remember this truth as well. Yes. And if we are saved, we are never alone. But even during the downtimes of our life, we still have the presence yes. of the Lord with us at all times. He promised over and over again that he would never leave us, that he would never forsake us. The trouble is that we get down in times, we get to struggle sometimes, and we walk away from the presence of God. But the whole time God is saying, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going away from you. I'm going to try to hold on to you. If you would only come back to me, I will wrap you in my arms once again. We're still in the presence of the Lord. Yes. And he is with us at all times. Yes, he is. And the second thing that Isaiah did, besides seeing what he saw, we need to sense what Isaiah sensed. He sensed in his own condition. When Isaiah saw the Lord, he really, he, 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 he quickly, he realized that there was problems within his own heart. And that is what happens when you get close to God. Yeah. Moving closer to God and seeing him as he is, yeah. it reveals the wickedness. And it reveals the sin in our own lives. Isaiah, he probably thought all was well in his life. Until he saw the Lord in his glory and in his holiness. And when, when he did, Isaiah was reminded and he was uh, made aware of his own failings. Made away or made aware of his own shortcomings. Can I say that until we see God and are confronted with our own condition before him, we have a chance to remain haughty and to remain proud. But when we come face to face with who he is yeah, yeah. and what we are, it will or it should produce humility and confession. Yeah. And notice, Brother Danny, that Isaiah did not cry out, woe is my neighbor. Woe is my friend. Woe is my family. But he cried out, woe is me. Yes. And until we are able to see our own failures and the need for our repentance before the Lord, we will never become clean. Right. And the sooner we come clean with the Lord about our own condition, the sooner our struggles yes. will begin to turn around. Yes. So Isaiah he sensed his own condition. And then he sensed his own cleansing. Oh, thank God. Thank God that the Lord does not just point out our sins, but he also provides. He provides a means for our cleansing. Amen. And with Isaiah, it was an angel with a live coal from the altar. But with us, it's not a live coal from the altar. But with us, it is the precious blood of Jesus that still flows from Calvary's hill today. If we ever see him as he is, we see ourselves as we are. Then we will come in humility and be able to confess our sins. Now we got to understand that you know, some of us look in the mirror and we, 
We think, my Lord, what is this? I mean, we look in the mirror and we, I mean, us men that usually have real short haircuts, we can look in the mirror now and we're like, man, what in the world? Looking pretty rough. But in the spiritual sense, the closer you get to God, the worse you look. The closer you get to God. But, but when that real, realization comes and we deal with it in repentance before the Lord, then we'll, we will experience his cleansing. And then we'll be able to stand in his presence and receive all that he has for us. Talk about a struggling time turning around. When we look in that mirror and we realize that we don't look too good in our sinful state. When we look in that mirror and we realize that we're not where we need to be with God. We need to begin to sense like Isaiah our own condition. We need to begin to sense that there's got to be a change come in our lives. There's got to be a difference in our life. If we want to come out of the struggles, we got to recognize our own failures. We've got to recognize our own shortcomings and allow God to change us. Yes, amen. My final thing that we can learn from Isaiah is that we need to say what Isaiah said. In verse 8, we see that he said, I'm available. He said, I'm available. He, as soon as Isaiah gets his heart clean, he hears the call of the Lord yeah. to his service. When Isaiah said, here am I, he was saying my downtime is over. Yeah. That my struggle is over and now I'm ready for your service. He was signifying that he was over the death of Uzziah and that his life was now on the altar of sacrifice for the glory of God. That's what we need to say when life becomes a, becomes a struggle. That when life turns us down, we need to get our all on the altar for God and come to a place where absolutely nothing means anything to us but what He wants from us. We need to we need to submit ourselves. We need to surrender. We need to sacrifice. Yes. Romans chapter 12 says that I beseech you therefore, brother, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Yes. We need to become submitted to God. We need to surrender to God. We need to become that living sacrifice and say, God, nothing else matters but what you want from me. Because you see, when you get that attitude, your struggles in life will begin to diminish. When you get that attitude, your problems in life will begin to diminish. When you get that attitude, your family will start coming together. Your friends will start coming together. Because you say, wrong is me. I need to change in order for things to change in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the final thing he said, he said, I'm agreeable. Isaiah not only told the Lord, not only did he tell the Lord of his availability, but he also mentioned his agreeability. He was saying, Lord, I'm here to do what you want, and I'm willing to do what you want. Send me. And let me go do what you want me to do. Yes. You see, this is a sure way. A sure way to turn your downside. To turn your life, if you would, upside down. This is a sure way to confuse the devil. Yeah. This is a sure way to say in the middle of all my struggle, in the middle of all my worry, in the middle of all my doubt, here I am, God. I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to make myself available, and I'm going to walk out and do your service. Send me, God. I've got struggles. I've got problems. I've got worries. But send me, God, to do your service. Make yourself available to the Lord. 
and get agreeable to whatever he asked you to do. And you can be assured that your blessings will come. You can be assured that your life you thought was a curse becomes a blessing. And that he will begin to use you for his glory. We need to see what Isaiah saw. We need to sense what Isaiah sensed. And we need to say what he said. D.L. Moody said, the world has yet to see what God can do with and for and through a man who was fully and wholly consecrated to God. The world has yet to see what God can do with and for and through a man who was fully and wholly Consecrated to God. And in closing this morning, we need to see what Isaiah saw. Isaiah saw God's position. Isaiah saw God's personality. He saw God's presence. Then we need to sense what Isaiah sensed. Isaiah sensed or he recognized his own condition. But when he sensed his own condition, he also sensed of the cleansing that he needed. And then we need to say what Isaiah said. He said, I'm available. Can we say that this morning? Yes, Can we say, Lord, I've looked myself in the mirror and I see my faults, I see my failures, I see my sharp shortcomings. But in the middle of my failures, in the middle of my shortcomings, God, I know that you have a cleansing for me and I, I stand here this morning to be cleansed. And wherever you're watching at this morning, Whatever, whatever you're doing this morning, you can stand in his presence. Yes. And you can say, I, I, I've come up short, God. I've failed, God. But I stand in your presence this morning to be cleansed by your precious blood. And then make yourself, as Isaiah did, say what he said, make yourself available. Make yourself agreeable with God. Friends, loved ones, the down times are going to come in your life. You can count on them just as sure as you can count on the sun to rise and the sun to set each and every day. But however, when they do come, you can sharpen the time or the duration. And you can sharpen even the, the severity by simply seeing what Isaiah saw. Sensing what Isaiah sensed and saying what Isaiah said. You see, a focused heart, a clean heart, and a surrendered heart will quickly find itself on the upward climb. I know that's what I want in my life. How about you? As Sister Melissa begins to sing the song, Change My Heart, oh God, everyone that's in this building, I want you to stand. And I want you to begin to think, and everybody that's watching this video, wherever you're at, whether in your bedroom, your dining room, the living room, wherever you're at, I want you to, to begin to open up your heart to God. Begin to see what Isaiah saw. He saw the glory of the Lord. 
He saw the position of God. He saw the, the presence of God. And then he sensed that in his own life, he sensed the failures. He sensed the change that needs to come. He changed, and when he did, he, he made himself available to God. He made himself agreeable to God. And I urge you this morning, those that are in this building and those that are watching, that you will begin to focus your heart. Allow God to clean your heart and become surrendered to God and watch your condition begin to climb. Watch your, your condition to begin to, to take that upward climb. Maybe some that are watching this morning those that are listening this morning. Maybe you feel like you've been on a downward spiral. Not only because of our current situation in our community, our state, our country, our world. But maybe there's some things that's in your life that, that was already beginning that downward spiral. And, and this has just compacted everything. But the Lord says this morning that if you would open up to him. That you begin to pray to him and, and seek after him. In the middle of your downward spiral, uh, in the middle of your downward spiral this morning, I can begin to lift you up. Allow me to cleanse you. Oh, allow me to cleanse you. Allow me to wash you this morning. Allow me to give you a new look. Allow me to give you a new perspective of your life. The Lord says, I've not left you, that I've always been with you. Oh, Lord. Help me, Lord, to focus my heart on you, oh God. Help me, Lord, to surrender my heart to you, oh God. Change my heart. Oh, yes, change my heart, oh God. Oh, shaka for your Bahaya. Oh, let me be like you, Lord. Change my heart, oh God. Oh, Lord, let me see. When Isaiah saw, let me sense what Isaiah said. Let me begin to say what Isaiah said.
the status of their worry is, the status of their struggle is right now, Lord. God, I pray, Lord, that, it, that as they listen and as they watch, God, that God, they reach out to you, Lord. God, and they seek that change in their heart, oh God. Whatever, whatever state they may be in right now, whatever situation they may be in right now, I ask you to move, God. And dear Lord, I ask you right now, God, God, that you would bless our communities. You would bless our state, God, our country, Lord, our, our world, God. As many have said already through this pandemic that you have not given us a spirit of fear. But God, we also understand that, that we're human. That there is a form of fear. There's a form of worry. But I pray this morning, God, God, to change that fear and worry to that peace. The peace, as Pastor spoke about Wednesday night, as we gathered together on Zoom as a church, that peace, Lord. God, that they would, that peace would just cover everyone right now, Lord God. And God, for everyone, Lord, that there would be a change of heart, God. God, that many lives have asked you to cleanse them this morning, God. God, I pray it doesn't stop there, Lord. I pray, God, that you continue to move in their life. You continue to bless, Lord. In your mighty name, Jesus. In your mighty name, Jesus. Watch this this morning. You were touched by to message us. Leave a comment. If you need prayer, please message or leave a comment or email us. We're willing and we're ready. We're willing and we're ready to pray for you, to lift you up. In Jesus' name. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for watching. We love you. We care for you. God bless you. God will see us through. And he will change our hearts. In Jesus' name. God bless you.